would like to welcome to the stage uh, the fascinating world. Uh, but for the further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the stage. Dr. 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 Thank you very much, Helen. So, as Helen said, I'm an academic working here at Imperial College, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about fat. So fat is a horrible substance, isn't it? We all eat too much of it. It makes us overweight. And when we eat too much of it, it's then associated with a huge number of disease states, including cancer, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. Well, all of those things I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to change for you. But I am going to be able to tell you a little bit more about the key roles that fat has in our body. So fat is responsible for a huge number of intricate cellular functions. And I'm going to focus on one of those today. So fat is a key building block of all the cells in our body. It forms this membrane or barrier around the cellular contents. And this barrier is absolutely essential to the overall structure of the cell. If we didn't have this membrane barrier, we'd essentially be a big puddle of chemicals sitting on the floor. <laughs> now, the fact that we're able to sequester or isolate cellular contents into a particular location is really important for everything that goes on in the cell. It provides a discrete environment for essential cellular processes. And this includes the chemical reactions that are responsible for converting food into the energy that we need. But the fact that you have what is essentially a waterproof barrier surrounding the cell means that we have to have some mechanism by which we can get important raw materials into the cell to provide the source for this type of reaction. So we need to have a mechanism by which we can take up nutrients into the cell. And we also need to have a mechanism by which we can remove waste products from the cell for disposal. So how does the cell perform this particular task? Well, the cell has evolved a very specialized set of proteins called membrane proteins that perform these specialized functions. And I'm showing you this image here. This is a cartoon of what a cell membrane looks like. Now, I know it looks a little bit complicated, but this is actually a dramatically simplified version <laughs> of what the cell membrane looks like. So these little blue balls here with the little yellow tail regions, those represent the fat molecules. And these form the basic architecture of the cell membrane. And through this cell membrane, we've got these membrane proteins. These are studded all the way through the membrane surface. And they pass from one side to the other. And it's these molecules that are responsible for moving essential nutrients across the membrane from one side to the other. And the research that's done in my group focuses on trying to understand exactly how these individual membrane proteins work. And this presents us with some very significant challenges. So the membranes that surround our cells have a very characteristic property, and that is that they're water-hating or hydrophobic. And because the membrane proteins sit within this environment, these are also water hating. Now, in order for us to understand exactly how these proteins work, we need to get them out of this environment. We need to take them out of the lipid. But it's the lipid that provides the majority of the support to the protein that allows it to retain its specific shape and function. So if we just strip away these lipid layers, the proteins essentially unravel. And they don't only unravel, they start to sort of clump together. And we end up with large <coughs> clumps of protein that have absolutely no relation to the fully folded, correctly 
fo uh, formed protein that's found in the membrane. So this sample is essentially useless. We simply can't work with this. It's not going to give us any information about what the protein actually looks like in the membrane. <coughs> so how do we solve this particular problem? Well, what we really need to do is we need to strip away these lipid layers from the protein, but we need to replace them with something that's going to protect the hydrophobic regions of the protein and allow those molecules to exist in a water-based solution so that we can study them. So the way in which we do this is to use a special group of molecules. <laughs> now, okay, we don't use fairy liquid, but the molecules that we use have very similar properties. The key difference being that the molecules we use are about 800 times more expensive. <laughs> so basically what the molecules do is they form this sort of soap bubble type structure. And this effectively strips away the lipid and replaces it. And it shields these hydrophobic regions. So what we end up with are protein soap particles that are stable in water-based solution. And so we're able to use, if we're really lucky and we get all of the conditions absolutely right, we're able to use these types of particles in order to understand exactly how these proteins work. So why is this important? Well, many of you here will suffer, like this lady here, with uh, hay fever. And in order to treat some of the symptoms associated with hay fever, you'll take antihistamines. Now, antihistamines work by interacting with this molecule here. It's an integral membrane protein called the histamine H1 receptor. Now, if you do take these uh, antihistamines, you'll also be aware that they have specific side effects. And one of the best known ones is drowsiness. And the reason you get drowsiness when you take antihistamines is because they don't just bind to the histamine H1 receptor. They also bind to other similar receptors. Last year, this structure, this high-resolution structure of the histamine H1 receptor was solved and published by a Japanese group in collaboration with scientists here at Imperial. And now, for the first time, we know exactly what the shape of the binding site of the receptor is. And so, in the future, we hope that chemists will be able to very precisely design molecules that fit into only the histamine H1 receptor. And these drugs will have little or no of the current side effects. So, in summary, what my group is trying to do is to understand exactly how integral membrane proteins work. And this should provide a framework for future drug development. Thank you very much.